Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, where we journey through the pages of time and faith to uncover the mysteries and messages within the Christian scriptures. Today, we embark on a captivating exploration to understand the essence of two monumental parts of the Bible, the Old Testament. The Old Testament is like a vast treasure trove, filled with ancient wisdom, prophecies, and the unfolding story of God's relationship with humanity before the arrival of Jesus Christ. It's the foundation upon which the faith is built, containing laws, history, poetry, and more. Turning the page, the New Testament opens a new chapter, revealing the life, teachings, and impact of Jesus Christ. It's a testament to transformation, love, and the promise of salvation. Join us as we delve into their significance, sift through their content, and learn about their authors. Whether you're a seeker, a believer, or simply curious, there's something here for everyone. So, stay tuned, and let's unravel these divine narratives together, right here on Celestial Chronicles. The meaning of, testament, in the Bible, in our quest to understand the sacred texts of Christianity, it's crucial to comprehend the term, testament, as it appears in the Bible. Testament, here is akin to a, covenant, a profound promise or agreement. Thus, when we speak of the Old Testament and the New Testament, we're actually referring to the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The Old Covenant is God's solemn vow to the people of Israel, declaring, I will be your God, and you will be my people, Leviticus 26 verse 12. This bond traces back to Abraham, the forefather of the Israelites, and was reinforced through his lineage, including notable figures such as Jacob, Moses, and David. In a remarkable promise, the Old Testament foreshadows the establishment of a new covenant, one that would extend beyond Israel to embrace all nations, Jeremiah 31 verse 31, Joel 2 verse 28. This anticipated covenant came to fruition through Jesus Christ. The New Testament chronicles how Jesus actualized this promise through his life on earth, his selfless sacrifice, and his victorious resurrection, 1 Corinthians 11 verses 23 to 26. What is the Old Testament? The Old Testament is the first part of the Bible, capturing the epic narrative from creation's beginning to the advent of Jesus. It is composed of 39 books that together weave the historical tapestry of ancient Israel and lay the ethical groundwork for the Christian faith. The Old Testament is rooted in the Hebrew Bible, which is traditionally divided into three primary categories, the Torah, the Prophets, Nevi'im, and the Writings, Ketuvim. The Torah, also known as the Pentateuch, encompasses the Bible's first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, guiding believers in the early chapters of spiritual and communal life. Within the Christian tradition, the initial segment of the Bible is often called the Torah or Pentateuch, Hebrew words meaning law or instruction. Yet, the term law here is not merely a set of rules as we might understand it today. Instead, it represents God's vision for how his people should live. The Torah is a blend of storytelling and life directives, revealing God's grand design for humanity and his steadfast commitment to his people. Genesis, the opening book, does more than recount creation, it sets the stage for the world's beginnings, emphasizing the formation of the Israelite nation and their special bond with God. Following this, the Old Testament encompasses the historical books, which depict the period after the Israelites' liberation from Egypt. Including books like Joshua, Judges, 1 Kings, and 2 Kings, this section documents Israel's conquest of the promised land of Canaan, the rise of the monarchy, and the eventual division and dissolution of the kingdom. The wisdom books constitute another section, encompassing a diverse range of literary genres and styles. These books delve into themes of beauty, love, joy, and sorrow while offering reflections on the character and nature of God. This collection includes Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, and Job. The Old Testament culminates with the prophetic books, categorized in the Tanakh as either major or minor prophets. The minor prophets, such as Jonah and Amos, are noted for their concise messages, while the major prophets, including Isaiah and Jeremiah, are recognized for their extensive writings. These texts provide a historical narrative as told by God's chosen messengers and offer insights into the lasting impact of those times, including the collapse of the kingdoms of Israel and Judah and the subsequent periods of captivity and exile. How does the Old Testament have an outline? The Old Testament comprises 39 distinct books, with some of them forming Part 1 and Part 2 of longer narratives. These books can be categorized into three primary genres. One historical books, these texts commence with the account of creation and predominantly focus on chronicling the history of the people of Israel and God's interactions with them. Two poetic books or writings, this category encompasses songs, proverbs, and poems found within the Old Testament. Three prophetic books, within this genre, you'll discover the messages of God, primarily directed towards the people of Israel. Who authored the Old Testament? 
the Old Testament is a collection of writings that emerged over a millennium, penned by a variety of authors. These writers primarily used Hebrew, with some portions in Aramaic. Traditionally, Moses is credited with authoring the first five books, despite his Egyptian royal background, as he was chosen by God to lead Israel both politically and spiritually. The writers of many of the subsequent historical books, however, are not identified. The prophetic books encapsulate the messages and visions of the prophets of Israel, though not always written directly by them. For example, the book of Jeremiah suggests that a scribe contributed to its writing. The Psalms are a compilation of hymns from different sources, including King David, the Korahites, and Asaph. The writings such as Song of Songs, Ecclesiastes, and Proverbs are traditionally ascribed to King Solomon. The uncertainty of the precise authorship of each book in the Bible is not generally seen as problematic. The common belief is that these human authors were inspired by God's Spirit as they wrote, meaning the text's authority comes not from the human scribes but from God, who is considered the true author. When was the Old Testament written or assembled? The last books of the Old Testament were written and or edited after Israel's return from exile, approximately 400 BC. Moses, the author of the first five books of the Bible, lived approximately 1400 BC. He recorded oral and possibly also written accounts about the period, ranging from creation until his own day. The later books developed over the centuries. What makes the Old Testament so important? The Old Testament's enduring relevance lies in its timeless wisdom and divine inspiration, transcending its ancient roots to speak to modern believers. These texts have been carefully preserved through the ages, revered not just as historical documents but as the inspired Word of God, infallible and sacred. Like the New Testament, the Old Testament acts as a divine medium, revealing God's nature and intentions to humanity through stories of His dealings with people and through prophecies. The truths within the Old Testament surpass cultural and temporal boundaries, offering deep insights into God's character and His plans for us. Yet, as the narrative of salvation history progresses, some aspects evolve. The coming of Jesus marked the beginning of a new covenant, with Jesus taking on the role of the ultimate high priest and sovereign. This transition affects how Old Testament laws are viewed and applied today, especially concerning sacrifices and the priesthood. As stated in Hebrews 7 verse 12, a change in the priesthood necessitates a change in the law. Understanding which elements of the Bible are pertinent today and their application is a complex and nuanced topic. For more on this subject, one might refer to discussions on whether Christians are bound by Old Testament laws and which biblical principles are relevant in contemporary times. What does the Old Testament have to say? The Old Testament opens with the story of the creation of the universe and our planet, as recounted in the first two chapters of Genesis. It goes on to describe the first act of human rebellion, where the initial pair of humans broke a straightforward directive. This defiance had far-reaching effects, altering the whole of creation and, crucially, the bond between humans and the divine, as portrayed in Genesis 3. Yet, in the aftermath of this transgression, God initiated steps to mend the fractured relationship with mankind by promising a Redeemer. This extraordinary vow was given soon after the first sin, as recorded in Genesis 3 verse 15. In this critical passage, God foretold that the influence of the evil one would be defeated by a progeny of Eve, alluding to Jesus Christ. This prophecy weaves through the Old Testament, creating a sense of hopeful expectation for the emergence of the Messiah, the people of Israel as the people of God. In the grand narrative of the Old Testament, God's master plan began to take shape when he chose Abraham as the forefather of a new nation, Israel. God's promise to Abraham, as documented in Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3, was that his lineage would bring blessings to all nations on earth. Abraham's progeny then experienced a lengthy period of captivity in Egypt, which lasted four centuries, as described in Exodus 1. In response to this, God appointed an extraordinary leader, Moses, who led the Israelites from their Egyptian captivity to the Promised Land, a journey detailed in Exodus 13 verses 17 to 22. On this momentous exodus, God delivered his divine laws to his people, an event immortalized in Exodus 20. Additionally, God forged a sacred covenant with the Israelites, as detailed in Exodus 34 verse 10 and 34 colon 27, affirming a deep bond with them as their deity and they as his chosen people, committed to following his decrees. Israel's disobedience in contrast to God's faithfulness. Upon reaching the promised land, the Israelites swiftly drifted away from their devotion to God, often turning to the worship of other deities. Additionally, they expressed a desire for a human king despite it being contrary to God's divine will, as articulated in 1 Samuel 8 verse 7. Nevertheless, their second king, David, rose to legendary status and earned the distinction of being a man after God's own heart, as affirmed in 1 Samuel 13 verse 14. 
Notably, it was from David's lineage that Jesus, the promised Messiah, would eventually be born, as indicated in Luke 3 verse 31. The Old Testament also encompasses numerous prophetic writings and historical accounts that recount the era following King David, marked by the recurrent abandonment of God by the people of Israel, leading to their eventual exile. God's dedication to his people did not waver in the face of these difficulties. Throughout this tumultuous period, the Old Testament consistently looks forward to the arrival of Jesus, the Messiah, foretold to redeem his people and re-establish their harmonious relationship with God. The time between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The period bridging the Old and New Testaments, often referred to as the intertestamental period, spans roughly four centuries, from the last writings of the Old Testament around 400 BC to the dawn of the New Testament era with the birth of Jesus around 4 BC and John the Baptist's ministry beginning around 25 AD. During this time, there was a notable scarcity of prophetic messages. What occurred in this interim? Are there historical documents from this time? Indeed, the Maccabean books provide historical narratives of this era. It is important to note, however, that these texts are not part of the biblical canon, meaning they are not considered divinely inspired or authoritative scripture. These writings, often called deuterocanonical or apocryphal, are either omitted from most versions of the Bible or included with a clear distinction that they do not possess the same divine authority as the 66 books of the canonical Old and New Testaments. The Old Testament features a rich lexicon of 5,800 words and is presented in a variety of configurations across different Christian traditions. The Orthodox Church recognizes 51 books, while the Protestant tradition counts 39. Key manuscripts such as the Codex Vaticanus, Codex Sinaiticus, Codex Alexandrinus, and Peshitta are notable for their inclusion. The Old Testament spans a range of literary forms, from poetry and songs of praise to wisdom literature, proverbs, and prophecies. On the other hand, the New Testament, with its 4,800-word vocabulary, sometimes includes additional writings like Tobit, Judith, Wisdom of Solomon, Wisdom of Jesus Sirach, and Baruch, as well as extra passages in other parts of the Bible. It encompasses the four Gospels that recount Jesus' life and death, the Acts of the Apostles, 21 epistles by various authors, and the prophetic revelation. The focus of these texts is on Christ's life and teachings and eschatological predictions. While the Old Testament was primarily written in Hebrew, with parts in Aramaic, the New Testament was penned in Greek. The arrangement of the Bible's books is not chronological, yet it is clear that the Old Testament predates the New Testament. In comparison, the New Testament, with its 27 books, makes up one-third of the Bible, whereas the Old Testament, with its larger vocabulary and 39 books, constitutes two-thirds of the scriptures. 